Obviously, I'm very happy to be here, but by a show of hands, does anyone actually know what important event we're missing by being in this room right now? It's the Walk for Autism on Hamilton's own campus. In the past 15 years, the prevalence of autism has increased by almost 300%, so the time to study it and spread awareness about it is now. In panel one of my slide, I show that it is important to study autism because individuals with autism often face social cognitive deficits, which makes it difficult for them to interact socially with their typically developing peers. These peers are often misinformed about autism and therefore more likely to stigmatize it. As a result, it is unlikely that these two groups will ever engage, which leaves the individuals with autism socially isolated and the typical, typically developing peers uninformed and therefore stigmatizing. This is a dangerous cycle. And the goal of my thesis was to interrupt this cycle by identifying the factor that could unify these two groups. To do this, I studied preventative disclosure. Preventative disclosure is the idea that if you have a disorder, but you disclose it to your peers, they'll be more likely to be accepting of you. However, preventative disclosure is studied very little in regard to autism. To study the effects of preventative disclosure, I ran an experiment where I asked participants to rate their openness toward a character in a scenario who either disclosed having autism, disclosed having an unrelated disorder like ADHD, or disclosed nothing at all. Characters in all scenarios display behaviors typical of autism. So I was able to compare openness differences based on what the characters had disclosed and hold behaviors constant. In panel two, you'll see my results. There is, as you can see, there's a little difference between the blue bars and the green bars, meaning that participants who disclosed having autism, or characters who disclosed having autism and characters who disclosed having an unrelated disorder were not rated differently. However, you'll see a big difference between the blue bars and the yellow bars, meaning that characters who disclosed autism were rated significantly higher than characters who disclosed nothing at all. What these results ultimately demonstrate is that preventative disclosure is likely to reduce stigmatization of autism. In panel three, I show that this is important because it interrupts the dangerous cycle I previously mentioned. If disclosing autism is likely to reduce stigmatization, this can then increase the likelihood of social interactions between individuals with autism and typically developing peers. This can then enhance the social skills of individuals with autism and increase knowledge by typically developing peers. This cycle then feeds back into itself, creating a mutually beneficial relationship for both parties. Hopefully, Results like these can be implemented in schools and colleges to better the lives of individuals with autism, spread knowledge and awareness about an important disorder, and develop meaningful relationships along the way. Thank you.